Coke, sugar, who am I kidding? You read the thumbnail, you saw the description. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to a soon to become Beaver Brews Day. Thank you for everybody, first off, for voting for the new name of the channel. And as you saw in the question or the statement, that we will be changing the channel's name so it suits the direction of the channel. Since we've been doing mostly distilling, I think it's only suitable that we change the name so it suits the channel. So as you saw in the thumbnail as well as the description that, uh, or title, not description, we are doing something really silly today. Now, I've been asked this question numerous times before. Can you ferment soda? And more specifically, people ask if you can ferment Coca-Cola. Now, that question has been bothering me for the last couple of months. And I decided on my way back from work today, why not try it? As we gear up to be doing our all grain winter bourbon, I thought we will just slip in a quick little video on distilling soda. And what soda we're distilling is a cola. Now this is a cheap knockoff cola available around South Africa. I'm not going to name the brand because I don't want any trouble if something goes wrong. So yeah, <laughs> if you can guess the bottle, then you can know what soda it is. Now, first things that was concerning when it came down to wanting to ferment out a soda was what kind of preservatives do they add to the soda so one of the preservatives is a sodium benzenate i think with enough um how can i put it nutrients the yeast will overpower that and it will chew through that the other thing that was quite concerning is the phosphoric acid in the cola. What I'm going to do is I'm going to neutralize the phosphoric acid using bicarbonate of soda. So I'm just going to take the acid and I'm going to bring it down with something that is base and get this to be a pH neutral wash. So the yeast has a field day. So yeah, we're going to use some bicarb to bring it down. Oops, there we go. And then the sugar. So this is just carbonated water, sugar, flavoring, and non nutritive sweetener, meaning the yeast will not chew through the sweetener. So what I want to do first is before we start adding everything into a bucket and pitching the yeast, just want to check what gravity we have from a standard bottle of cola. So as you can see, Coke has a original gravity of 1.020 or a 1020. So that should give us roughly, how much ABV? It doesn't even say. I think it's like 2%. <laughs> yeah, 2% ABV. As we just saw, Coke has an original gravity or Cola has an original gravity of a 1.020. So that's a lot less sugar than I originally thought. I don't know if you guys are surprised, but I sure as hell am. So that means I need to add an additional three kilograms of sugar to the wash to get it up to roughly 10% to suit the yeast that we're gonna be using. The yeast we'll be using is our washed bootleggers yeast. Uh, I took it out of the fridge this morning, let it come up to room temperature. Next up, what we're going to do now is we need to degas all this coke and then we need to bring the pH down. Eight 
and a bit of bottles went into the fermenter now adding onto the sugar we should be standing on roughly about 20 point something liters of wash you just saw me add three kilograms of brown sugar it's now smelling slightly molassesy but still a strong hint of coke what i want to do now is give it a quick taste and see what it tastes like before I drink denutralize, before I neutralize, not denutralize, neutralize. So that is a sudsy foamy concoction, yeah. So the sugar and all the other stuff made it nice and foamy. Ooh. Now that's sweet. Okay, so now it's a super sweet uh, toffee-like, Coca-Cola-like flavor. Next up. Let's take that phosphoric acid on the label. We're gonna take that phosphoric acid and just knock it back down. So I think about a tablespoon of uh, bicarb of soda should do the trick. Next up, some nutrient. So I'm going for DAP, diammonium phosphate. And normally I'll go for one tablespoon, but I think because we want to overpower that uh, potassium something or other, we need two and a little bit of love. Let's get that all mixed in. Now let's test our gravity and see if we get to about 10% ABV. Okay. So I believe we can quickly get a measurement of the, not going to be very accurate, but yeah, this is an experiment for fun, so uh, I don't think we have to take it super seriously. Okay, considering the height of the suds and the level of the liquid, we are sitting on a 1.080, so that should be a 1080. For everybody that's wondering, and that should ferment out roughly 13% ABV. Let's see if there's a lot of unfermentable, dissolvable stuff in this, because I do not think that this is going to go all the way down to uh, zero. I think we're going to end up with roughly the same gravity that we started with of a 1.020. Let's see what happens. Okay, next up, what we need to do is get our yeast in. So this is the bootleggers yeast that we washed a couple of weeks ago. It was in the fridge, settled out, and let it come up to temperature. What I'm going to do now is shake it up so I get that sediment all mixed in. As you can hear, there's a lot of activity in there. There we go. And in it goes. There we go. Uh, next up what we're going to do is we're going to put our lid on here We're going to allow this to ferment up and see what we get out of it. So yeah uh, Hopefully the yeast overpowers that preservatives and we will get a product to distill. This is merely an experiment It's something that I've been asking myself for a very long time and uh, Been getting the question a lot Recently, so yeah, I tried it it fails, then you know you don't have to try it at home. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember to send, send in your suggestions for this still. And as always, hit that subscribe button down in the corner and put a like or a comment. It really helps the channel out. Thank you very much. Have a lucky day.